Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Farman. Today we got real team rider Will Forrest with us. Will, welcome. Thank you. And we are reviewing the Pizel Precious. Will, let's start off first. What's your height and weight? I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10", five, about 135 pounds. This board is 5'4", and 18 three quarters, two and 19 stick, and 26 liters. 26. Okay. 26. So it's a little more than. What do you liters. normally ride? Like your high performance shortboard, your everyday shortboard? Like 24 and a half liters. Okay. Um, at the least. Sometimes like a groveler is like 25. 25. Okay. okay. So you went a little bit more with this board. A little bit more. Quite a bit more. Yeah. So let's talk about when you first started looking at this board and being like, hey, I think I want to get one of these. You had a trip right coming up to El Salvador. Yeah. Let's talk about that wave that you're eyeing this board for. Yeah. So I came into the shop to get a board for El Salvador. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen one of these things. I think we had just got them. Like they had just came in the door that day. But I was I was in the shop that day specifically to get a board just for that trip. And I liked the way like the step deck looked and how it's got like a lot of thickness up front. And yep. then plus it's 5'4", but it's 26 liters. So it's not like a big board, but it's got a lot of foam. And that wave is a very long, it's just a right hand point break kind of mushy, not like super steep, yep. but mushy and very long. So I knew I wanted a board with a little bit more leaderage just so I could paddle back up nonstop, mm -hmm. surf all day. But I also wanted something that was like small and still really rippable. Yep. And the step deck just looked cool. So okay. I've never had something like this before. I thought that maybe with the, all that foam kind of lifted off the deck, it would give it extra paddle power and a little bit more of like float through the small waves. But since the rail is still thin, yep. it would still be like very turnable. Really unique looking. I mean, it's got like- It's concave. Like it's got like a concave deck. Yeah. So your whole chest like lays down in it. Yeah. And then it's got like this- Step like, down. Almost like a chine right here, a flare up and then way back down on the rails. Mm -hmm. How did that feel like laying down in the deck? Was it like super it's, positive? It's yeah, it's like nice. almost like sucking you into yeah. the board. Yeah, it was cool. You can't wax this. I tried that. Like I would wax it so I could grab the rails and duck dive. Right. But like I think when you're when you're on the board, like this rail is in the water so much that the wax would just come off. Okay. Like it would just the the water would just take the wax off. So like I waxed this like before I paddled out every time so I could duck dive and the wax just would just come right off. Come right off. The thing I noticed the most is just like when you stand up, especially at that wave that we were at in El Salvador, like the board just instantly wants to go. Mm -hmm. Like if the wave has like power, like instantly when you stand up, you don't have to work for it. It has a ton of forward speed. Like okay. the board just wants to go fast and like go down the line. Um, it wasn't like a super rippable like top to bottom board, more of just like cutbacks and like floaters. And it goes really good through like a flat section. Like, you know, okay. You know, do a turn and then the wave flattens out a little bit. You can just kind of cruise right through it. It'll just keep gliding right yeah, through. Yeah, just keep stuff. gliding right through. Okay, so it so, carries momentum well and glides, glides yeah. well across the flats. But it felt like it had like a lot of forward speed is what I would say. Like the board felt like it wanted to go forward. Okay. Didn't feel like super pivoty unless the wave like really stood up. It I felt it loosen up a couple times. Only if you had like a ton of speed going into a steep section. Cause that was like the thing I noticed when I brought it back here and tried to surf it here. A lot of our waves, they're steep, but you stand up, you kind of have to work for the speed a little bit. Mm -hmm. This thing, it didn't really want to do that. It doesn't want to work for the for the speed. It wants a wave that has a lot of speed already. Okay. So you stand up and you try and get it going and it just kind of felt sluggish. So it definitely was better at like a point break style wave. So, and what was the wave height range? Like when you were in El Salvador, what was the like the smallest to the biggest? The smallest running? was like waist high, maybe a little smaller, mm -hmm. and then the biggest was like maybe head high. It okay. didn't really get that big when we were there. It got small. I personally liked the smaller surf better, just because it was it was steeper. Like once it got bigger, the wave was like pretty mushy and kind of boring, but. The smaller waves, like even on the bigger days, I was looking for the smaller, like inside steep waves. Okay. So, but, and it, uh, it handled that range. Yeah, it handled the bigger like waves. The whole way good. Yeah. Okay. It definitely felt like if it was just like a long, bigger wave, it just wanted to do big carves and it handled mm -hmm. very well. Like it, it didn't feel choppy or bouncy or anything like that. So, for down there, you were, you were stoked with it. Also. Yeah, I loved it. Okay. Loved it there. It was really good. I rode my, other board, my groveler, like one day, and okay. just instantly went in. I caught like one wave, went in, grabbed this thing, went back out. Nice. I caught so many waves on this board. Like I said, extra foam just 
the wave was so long. It took like five minutes to paddle out. Yeah. Because you were just going for so far. Yeah, so far. Like in the, the Red Bull jet ski wasn't there to pick you up? No. Dude, they don't. What's up with that? Take you back up to the top of your heat? Yeah. <laughs> so you had a good time with this board in El Salvador. You brought it back here to the Outer Banks. And from what I understand, it was kind of hit or miss here, right? Like on yeah. days you liked it or not. I I never really had like a great session on it. Like okay. I definitely had some sessions where I was like just having fun. Um, if the wave was big, if it was bigger, like chest high, it was okay. Um, anything smaller than that, it was not not good. It doesn't generate speed very well. Like okay. it, it wants the wave to make all the speed for you, and then it holds the speed very well. But like okay. building speed on this board, it was a struggle. For here, it just wasn't wasn't the best. It wasn't as good for here as it was like elsewhere. Yeah, and also it's like I said, it's not a very top to bottom board in my opinion. It's more like out on the open face, like turns and laybacks and floaters. It doesn't do snaps very easily, in okay. my opinion. Wasn't as good as your standard high performance shortboard. Let's talk about fins. What fins did you set it up with? I had the uh, John John Futures fins. They're kind of just what I use for my everyday high performance shortboard. And those are mediums? Mediums, okay. yeah. I use these in pretty much everything. They're just kind of Okay, so use, that's like a so. given like across all your boards. Yeah. That way you got one thing that you're not changing. Pretty much, yeah. And then like, I have a board that's in FCS, which I use the Mayhems, but in all my features boards, it's these. Did you have the opportunity to try it as a quad? Uh, no, I didn't try it as a quad. I didn't okay. feel like this board needed it. You know, like when I think of a quad, I think of a board that, you know, you're going to go fast, do bigger carves. This board already wants to do that with the thruster. And I think with the thruster, it gives me a little bit of ability to put the board in the lip. I didn't think with the quad, I would be able to do that. You got the Veya squash tail. Veya John John Florence pad. First time I used it, I didn't like the look of it because there's a little ridge right here. I'm a big fan of the arch. I don't like pads that don't have it. And the arch like stops before where you would put your foot. Like I like to put my foot on the back of the pad. Right. But there's no arch right there. So okay. I didn't think that I would like it. I felt like the arch kind of held my foot in there. And then when I wanted to step up on the board a little bit and like drive down the line, then I was on this part of the pad. Okay. So I thought it was good. I didn't have any issues with it. The arch right here. Right. That it doesn't connect all the way back to the kick. Mm -hmm. Basically right here where you're standing. There's no arch. You got to, so you're, yeah. you're basically standing on a flat pad. Right. Up against the kick and then using the back of the arch to yeah. lock you in. Kind of just held your foot like right in this little zone. Big fan of like this triangle spotted grip. They offer this pad in two different configurations, both three piece, right? So you can open them up. Yep. But they basically two different tail box. Mm -hmm. So they have yep. a round pin tail pad, which is like good for like the Paizo Ghost or any, any board that has a narrower tail. Uh, then they have the squash tail version. That's what yeah. this is. They stick really well. Like I've had a lot of pads come off and I was really worried about like the way the the step in the board right here like comes back to where the pad is that this part would start to peel up and then okay. I'd have to like cut it right here with the razor blade, but I didn't need to. That's a hard so, angle for a pad yeah, to stick on. Yeah, you know? it's and, rough. So. so the glue the glue on that's good. So that's yeah. cool. That's good feedback on the on the JJF Vea pad. How low of an ability could you put a surfer on this board like where they would have a good time on it? I would go as low as to say as you could you could put someone who's just like getting down the line and like riding a smaller board. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think you'd want to ride this thing like oversized, like as like a bigger mid-length style board. Okay. You definitely want to be like riding smaller boards. Yep. Once you're there and you're going down the line, this thing would be good. It's very easy to ride. You stand up, you don't need to pump and high line and do all this crazy stuff to get the board moving. Like mm -hmm. it'll, it'll stay floating and go down the line very easily, so. Very easy board to surf. Because the shape is like so alien looking, like I think a lot of people yeah. have a hard time identifying like kind of what it's like in their quiver. Would you kind of relate it to like a fish crossed um, with a short board? To me, it feels like a squash down mid length, just kind of cruising and then doing cutbacks and floaters. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it feels like. And but shorter and, and more shorter maneuverable and, than that. and more maneuverable. If the wave had speed and you stepped on the tail, you could definitely get it in the lip. I definitely wouldn't use it in super small surf if it was like beach break, but if it's like a point break with like speed down the line, yep. I think it would go really well. It's interesting because like you look at this board and you really don't know what to expect right, until, right, you, right. until you hop on it. Yeah, it was fun, real fun. So. That's awesome. Well, well, hey, thank you so much yeah. uh, for joining us and sharing all that insight about the Paisel Precious. If any of you out there have any questions about the Paisel Precious or would like to order one, you can always reach us at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.
<laughs> so, Will, after the last review, I I guess there were some viewers giving you grief they about said your I'm height. Not, I'm not I said 5'9", five 5'10", five right in there. And, and they said something about, well, the board was a certain length and you were the same height as the board? Yeah. And Will? Wait, wait, I got to stand as tall as possible. <laughs> I'm going to put you at 5'9". To maybe five, I'd say five nine and a half. Boom. I'm yeah, I don't think you're five ten though. I said five so nine. There it is. Maybe five ten. Live on YouTube, we're measuring things.